Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul and in this we're going to the video, let's discuss Intel and their desire to enter the discrete GPU market. For some time now we've only had AMD and Nvidia, but with Intel making their desires to provide GPUs to gamers abundantly clear, along with of course high performance computing being targeted by Intel, well that could be very good news for us as consumers. The company have been very vocal of late, asking gamers what they want in an AMA, and have also start, started a new campaign, and it is the Odyssey. It's very simple, you can take part with Intel to provide them feedback of what you want from a modern GPU as a gamer. So I think this video is going to be a very interesting thing for us to all discuss exactly what we're looking for from a modern GPU. Now obviously this is something I've created off my own back and I'm not working in cooperation with Intel or anything like that, but obviously if you guys want to tweet the video at Intel, I'm certainly not going to uh, stop you from doing so. We've had a number of very interesting graphics card releases over the past several years. For example, this one. This is the AMD RX 480 graphics card. You might remember this. It's actually kind of fitting, I'm holding this GPU in my hand, because after all, it was a GPU that Raja Kodori, who is now uh, the head over the, at the graphics division of Intel, helped to really pioneer. He really helped push this card. At the time, the RX 480 was actually a very interesting GPU. It retailed at around the 200 to 250 US dollar mark, depending whether you were going with the eight or four gigabyte model. And more importantly, this card allowed 1080p slash 1440p gaming to be mainstream. For example, this card was only a little bit slower than Nvidia's previous generation flagship, at the time anyway, the GTX 980, not the 980 Ti, just to stress, but was over a hundred and something dollars cheaper at the time of the GPU's launch, which is very impressive. For around the 250 US dollar mark, it was very hard to argue that the RX 480 was a imp very impressive GPU. But then we can compare it to this, which is a, well, RTX 2080 Ti, hopefully I'm getting that okay in shot there, which is obviously a very, very different card indeed, and retails at a considerably higher price point. We all know the pricing situation with the RTX 20 series of GPUs, whether it's the 2060, 2070, 2080, or finally 2080 Ti, they are substantially more expensive than possibly a lot of people would like to pay. Now, fast forward a couple of months, and of course I was uh, speaking to a source who uh, has it on good authority that we're going to see the launch of Navi in July, although there is another source that's spoken to me who told me it's going to be October, but let's for the sake of this video say it's going to be in July, just so we have a nice clear date in our noggins. Okay, so let's say it's July, AMD launched Navi 10. The purpose of Navi 10, from what we understand, is going to be very similar to the RX 480, i.e. bring down the cost of GPUs to consumers and AMD to target the low to mid range segment of the market. So for the sake of this video, let's assume that the rumors have been accurate up until now and that the cards will put out roughly on par performance with the GTX 1080 slash RTX 2070, but at a lower price point. We can all imagine that these cards, let's just say that I'm holding Navi here, because that would be a lot more impressive, because that means I can travel into the future and come back. That means that this card would be very popular with gamers and would obviously put Nvidia under a lot of pressure. Unfortunately for AMD, at the time that these cards launched and the same argument could of course be made at Nvidia, mining really hammered the pricing of these GPUs, so kind of shot them in the kneecap there, to be honest. But for Intel, their graphics cards don't launch until about 2020. There have been very precious details, very few precious details, regarding Intel and their plans for the GPU. We know that the discrete GPUs are going to be built on the same uh, graphics IP as what's found inside their CPUs, so in theory at least there should be a lot of crossover there and makes sense for graphics card drivers and optimization and working with developers and so on and so on. 
but there is no information yet regarding what the performance targets are for these cards, no information regarding pricing, and even a little thing, it's not that important actually, but um, are they going to be working with companies like, uh, what is this card? I think this is a power color. Yeah, this is a power color. So are they going to be working with guys like MSI, Power Color, Sapphire, Gigabyte, Asus, and so on, or are they going to go and just manufacture the GPUs themselves? Now, Intel certainly have the capability to do so. And we've even seen NVIDIA make similar moves. After all, there's a reason that the Founders Edition GPUs exist. It's so that NVIDIA can make a little more cash. But from the first thing I would like from a dedicated GPU is to work with AIBs because it just increases the choice for consumers. So I would like Intel to really push that and maybe not even create a Founders Edition card. Uh, if they want to sell their own GPU, fine, but don't have a premium version. Just make things as simple as possible. There have been some really eyebrow-raising GPUs that have been released from both companies. For example, AMD and the RX 580, but it only has 2048 shaders. Then you've got the absolute craziness that is currently the NVIDIA lineup of GPUs with the GTX 16 series, you've got the RTX 20 series, both are using Turing, but of course you've got the 16 series which does not support ray tracing. Consumers are going to get confused there, so from a personal standpoint as a reviewer and also someone who has to suggest cards to their friends who are less technically inclined, let's have a nice easy to follow naming scheme where people do not get confused. Make the product SKUs as easy identifiable as possible and that's about all we can ask for in that regard. What about price and performance then? Well, I think Intel have the ability and capability in terms of engineering talent to deliver a killer blow to the market and offer a GPU which puts out an impressive amount of performance at a decent price point. And that right now is critical. In 2019, the, the current generation of consoles, that is the Xbox One X and the PlayStation 4, are looking a little old graphically. But the next generation of consoles isn't too long into the future. We all know that the target release date, supposedly, for Scarlet, along with the PS5, is going to be in 2020. And so I think it's even more critical for us gamers to be able to get an impressive amount of graphical performance at a decent price. So Intel have a great opportunity here to join AMD to really pressure NVIDIA in that mid in that mid range. And that isn't to say that I don't want a high performance GPU from the company, but I would like it at a great price and a price that we feel that uh, we are happy to pay for an impressive jump forward in performance as well. I'm about to both praise and criticize AMD and their drivers. On one hand, Relive has really evolved and the feature set of AMD's drivers has improved immeasurably over the past couple of years. Back in the day, NVIDIA had just a more feature-packed set of drivers and they were more stable as well. GeForce uh, experience was just impressive and having Shadow Play built in was also really handy. Plus they had uh, other features that were just really nice. For example, the ability to have a uh, super sampling in the drivers. And that was just something that AMD didn't have natively. In fact, you had to kind of go through like this janky third party workaround and it was just like 50 50 if it worked for you, but I never got it working 100%. And it was just, yeah. But the company have improved their drivers a heck of a lot. And from a personal point of view now, I feel that the two companies, NVIDIA and AMD, are very similar to one another. It's just whichever you prefer uh, in terms of the in terms of the GUI. But that handling of the Radeon 7 launch with the driver side of things was just really bad. And it was clear that they needed a couple of extra weeks minimum to work on the drivers and just optimize the BIOS and get things running. So that's what I want to see from Intel. I would like to see better transparency and better discussion with members of the press and make sure that the drivers that are handed out to the members of the press are much more uh, like the drivers that you would expect from the consumer and just generally a better working relationship there. Noise and heat are another issue. 
And unfortunately, both NVIDIA and AMD in the past have been guilty of less than stellar reference design coolers. If you remember way back to the GTX 480 when it was launched, Fermi was just hot and the reference design cooler didn't really do much. Although, of course, a lot of that was architecture stuff as well. Then you had Polaris and it's very similar. As a slight aside, I'm actually testing the RX 480 in 2019 right now as part of a larger project. And I actually forgot just how hot this GPU can be. And that's something I would really like Intel to work on, to make sure that the architecture is, is cool uh, and the reference design to be up to snuff so that we don't have any issues. It's all but certain that uh, Intel's driver software is going to be as feature-packed, particularly for discrete GPUs, as what we see from AMD and NVIDIA. So that means, of course, that they will continue to push things such as game optimization or automatic game optimization, uh, inbuilt performance metrics, so you can see how well the game is performing and maybe have uh, even an upgrade advisor, such as how AMD do with their current drivers, and so on and so on. And these are all things which aim to improve the ecosystem for gamers. And that's actually something I discussed in a recent interview with NVIDIA. One of the things that the company are trying to do, NVIDIA that is, is to make things as easy as possible for people who are not necessarily so technically inclined. And I do feel that Intel are gonna to continue to push that as well because they know that just because you're a PC gamer, it doesn't necessarily mean that you want to spend lots of time in the graphic setting menu of your game. But of course, what they also want to do is to empower users who do want to mess around with that stuff as well. Fortunately for Intel, the company do have a history of providing GPUs in the form of iGPUs. So this does mean that they are not totally without experience, as well as the fact that you've got folks such as Raja Kadori and Chris Hook, who are now working at the company. So it's not like they're totally going into this blind. But with that said, they do have a lot to prove. NVIDIA and AMD are established. And if you were to see, let's say, a Radeon GPU or an NVIDIA GPU on a shelf, you might have second thoughts, or at least a lot of people might have second thoughts, picking up an Intel GPU instead. So then, this is by no means a complete list of what we would like to see from Intel in the GPU market. What I'm doing here is just scratching the surface. Instead, I'm putting the question to you. I've given you a couple of starting suggestions. What would you like to see from Intel's discrete GPU range? I'm also gonna go ahead and link their uh, program where you can help them out, which is known as Odyssey in the description of this video as well. So do feel free to do that. This is one of those times where I would encourage you to do it because ultimately having a third competitor which puts out excellent products is only going to be great for us as customers. And from a perspective of someone who <laughs> buys hardware and plays on PC, I like the idea. This has nothing to do with necessarily supporting Intel more than another company. This is just me wanting excellent competition in the marketplace. With all of that said, everyone, take care of yourselves and thanks very much for watching the video. Normal stuff, if you've enjoyed it, like, comment and share and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.